How can you go somewhere if you don't know where you're trying to go and what you're trying to achieve? I always like to say that the secret to success is doing a lot of little things consistently over a long period of time. Like people see the headline, the 50, yeah. but they don't realize there was a decade that went into that. Of training and building up to it? Everything. You know, you can only get so physically fit for a challenge and then at that point in time, your mind and your body have to come into alignment and then the mind takes over. And, uh, you know, one of the biggest questions I get is, how do I come or become mentally tough? And, uh, you know, a lot of people say, oh, you're either born with it or is it something that you can develop? And I'm in the, the camp of it's, it's a development process. It's, anybody can do it. And uh, I mean, it started for me in seventh grade. Um, I grew up as a wrestler in Canada. And uh, I lost my very first match. In fact, I lost almost every match after that wow. the, uh, the entire season. Um, Why'd you keep going? Yeah, I, I just, you know, I'm, I'm the type of person that I don't, I don't love to be defined by those moments. It was like the, the 5K that I have, or the four mile fun run. I don't like the word fun and run together. <laughs> but it, either. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How many people do you see running around smiling? Yeah. Um, but, but for me, um, I, I, don't, I don't enjoy those moments to define me and, and I, wanna, I wanna overcome that. And, uh, and so I, I would wake up and study the sport and, and show up and, and you know, you always hear show up early and stay late. Um, and, and I really did that, and by the time I hit my senior year, I went undefeated. Oh. Um, and it's not because I had any talent, um, it's because I was willing to show up. And so me, for me, that's where it starts. Everybody always says I have bad knees. And uh, I say you have bad knees because you don't run. That's and uh, because that guy right there in that stadium that couldn't get up and walk after his marathon shouldn't have had gone on and did what I did. Uh, which means also that I'm not talented or gifted. It was, a, it was a process that I went through and figured it out. Mm -hmm. uh, I, was, I was obsessed with, 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 not, with that not being my defining moment, right? A marathon was the pinnacle of running at the time and I only gave myself five months to get ready for it. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I coach full time now with athletes and one of the biggest things I try to get people to do is back down off the inspiration and let's build a foundation. Because, because having a giant goal is phenomenal, and you should. But as long as the time frame associated with it is, has the proper balance. Because when I, when I did the first world record, um, had I had the idea to do 50 consecutive, it still would have been a great goal, but not in that year. I had to go through the process and take my knocks and learn and evolve and grow to get to that point where I could even you know, toe the line for 50. How much of the learning and growing was your body growing and getting stronger and more capable? And how much was knowing how to deal with what you were gonna go through mentally? Yeah, both play a very pivotal role because the amount of uh, volume that I was doing, it's the smaller stabilizers, ligaments, tendons that, that don't develop as fast as, as muscles do. And that's why a lot of people get hurt because they go too quick with the development of these things. And the muscles will always grow faster than the smaller stabilizer things. And people aren't paying attention to those details. And they just get so excited with, with the, the enormity of the journey that they're not paying attention to the, those small things. And, and if you overlook those, you're gonna get injured and you're gonna be sidelined. Mental's obviously huge. Um, and that is the sword that you have to continually sharpen. So again, the goal would have been great in 2010 I wasn't nearly mentally tough enough. I had to go through that process to where I could wake up and, and, and do it. It's just, it's like a muscle. It's like a, a cardiovascular system. It, it's something that you can develop, but it takes time. Confidence builds confidence and success builds success. And having not taken the right steps, I would have, I would have ultimately failed come, come time for the 50. One reason was not enough for me to get back on my bike and do 20 more Ironmans. But as I started going through the list of everything that I was doing and why I was doing it, it's interesting because I, I, I would gather them all together and uh, I'd focus on this, this big ball 
and I would bring it in close to me. And as soon as I focused on that, I started to experience a rebirth. Because now I was focusing on the very, very next moment that I had control over. And everything that, that I was trying to accomplish and why I was there. And, and I call this process now looking back on it, both a rebirth and putting on my uniform, which was the alter ego. And my uniform was those yellow sunglasses you've seen me wear in some of my pictures. And when I put those glasses on, that's when the Iron Cowboy comes out. And that dude is a bad, bad man. And there's nothing that's going to get in his way. And, and, and I do a lot of uh, speaking from stage now, and I want to encourage people to find whatever their uniform is, find whatever their alter ego is. Because when you discover that and, and how to flip that switch, that, that's when nothing gets in your way. And that's where you shift your focus and you realize what your purpose is. And I, and I knew if I had the courage to get back on my bike and, and, and finish that day and then do the 20 more, my life would be different. That you're thinking that while you're there on the ground. And this whole process was about eight minutes. The whole thing from complete meltdown to breaking all of the purposes and whys down to the realization, the rebirth, and getting back on and going. Um, and it can, it can happen that quick. We're, we're moments away every day from a decision that's gonna completely change our life. Every single moment of every single day has a massive impact on where you ultimately end up. And so that was a huge turning point, but it was all the decisions before and after that led to that moment. If, if the journey you're on is big enough, and it's gonna have enough impact and, and change your life and other people's lives, one reason's not gonna be big enough. And you need to put a lot of thought and a lot of preparation and a lot of meditation into all of the reasons why. Because at some point in time, you're gonna to need to gather all those little bad boys up and then and intently focus on it to have enough courage to get back up and do 20 more Ironmans after all, everything that we went through. We're surrounded today by people being satisfied with mediocre. And, um, and for me, as soon as I realized that I, I could believe in myself and I had a, a supporting crew beside me and around me, that it opened up a lot of the doors. And the moment I, I used someone else's standard of excellence, that was just enough to get me moving. And then you need to put that person aside or look past that person and create or do you. Create your own lane. And so, so for me, you know, once I stopped looking at what everybody else was doing and then truly believed in what I could do, that, you know, combining it with all those character traits that I, that I talked about before, that, that's when human potential is truly, truly can be found and experienced. How did you develop the belief in yourself? Uh, I think just over, over a long period of time. Again, it's that whole mental aspect of sharpening that tool and putting yourself in, in situations where you can learn and grow. Success builds success and confidence builds confidence. And just over time, as I started to do things, I was, I was becoming successful at them. And I was taking, I was doing a lot of little things consistently over a long period of time. And that's what allowed me to build the confidence to take on the next, the next, the next. And so it's just, it was learned. It was learned by doing and take, ma taking massive amounts of action. You have to, you have to immediately act and, and, and go after it. The only thing I'm trying to do is to get people to open their minds um, as to what is possible. We're just, we're living in a day and age where we're, we're limiting what we think is, is, is possible. We're getting in our own way. And, and my, my thing that I want to get people to do, and, and you've probably heard somebody say it before, but motion creates emotion. The hardest thing to do is start moving, engaging. Once you start to move and engage, you realize two things. One, it's not, it's not as scary as you thought it was. And two, you actually start enjoying what you're doing. It was, it was, the only thing that was scaring you was the, the, first, mo the first action. Dude, I'm, I'm just like every ordinary dude that's out there. I just have learned to put myself in the game. I've learned to show up every single day. The moment you realize the next step isn't going to kill you, and that next step is the first step to evolving, 
changing, growing, and learning, and becoming literally the best version of yourself, that's the most beautiful thing. It's not going to kill you. And putting yourself in the game, you're giving yourself an opportunity to achieve something that everybody else said was impossible. What do you say, or as a speaker, what do you say to somebody who they don't know what they want? I've got a friend right now who's massively struggling, and it's the exact question I asked him. I said, what do you want? What's your passion? What are you trying to accomplish? He could not answer the question. And so my next question was, this is what you have to do first. You have to, can't change anybody. They have to be in a space and ready to do it and, and do it for themselves. And so for me to hold somebody to my standard, I think is, is somewhat unfair. Now, I hate excuses. I hate entitlement. I want to hold people to that standard, but it's not fair because they're on their own journey and, I, and I, I'm not living from their perspective. Um, everybody's heart is different. And for me to judge somebody else to my standard is unfair because I don't know where they are in their journey. And they could be at the beginning stages and it would have been unfair to judge me at 24, 41 today. I've learned a lot and I've grown a lot. So my standard at 41 is different than my standard at 24. So if I'm trying to hold a 24 year old to my standard, probably not realistic. Maybe I'm cautioning people that are listening to take a step back and to understand, take a minute to understand what that person's heart possibly is and where they are on their journey in ret retrospect to where you are on your journey. That's really, really insightful. Uh, I love that a lot. And knowing what somebody's heart is, I think is, um, I'm going to use that. That's really, really interesting. What is the impact that you want to have on the world? Ah, uh, man, the impact. I, I am not here today to change anybody. Um, and we just had a, a, a good conversation about um, people at different times of their journey. And for me, I literally just want to have people understand that you have to move to start feeling something. And if you move and start feeling something, you're on your way to the best version of yourself. And, and the impact that I want to have is just to have the ability to get you to live outside of the existence that you're in and to open it up to what's truly possible. And if I can just get people to understand that you're in your own way and to open up Pandora's box per se, then you'll truly find what you're limits are and I hope that you don't find your limits, that you exceed your limits.